since the beginning of the Quaker movement, one of the ways that Friends have distinguished themselves is in their practices connected with death and burial. And Quaker burying grounds, Quaker cemeteries, although cemetery is a word that Friends probably didn't use until at least the 19th century, uh, are unusual. They're an illustration of how Friends uh, try to distinguish themselves from the rest of the world. Friends believed that uh, as it was inappropriate to try to elevate some people above others in life, it was equally inappropriate to do that in death. Thus, Friends banned tombstones from their burying grounds because they thought that all the tombstones did was to distinguish some people from others. When Quakers attended church in their parishes in 17th century England, in those churches they would have been surrounded by memorials, in some cases grandiose tombs, that even in death were intended to communicate that the upper classes, the people who had sat in the frontmost pews in church by life, still exercised dominion uh, even in death by the way that they had buried themselves. Friends felt it uh, appropriate, required of them, that even in death that they bear testimony against such uh, practices that serve to puff up human vanity. So in a Quaker burying ground in the 17th and 18th centuries, most likely when you approached it, you would have seen a simple unbroken uh, spance of earth, usually uh, consisting entirely of unmarked graves. There were always some friends who found that unacceptable. You know, they certainly didn't want grandiose monuments that, uh, you know, spoke to how some families were superior to others. But they could see nothing wrong with a simple stone that helped them remember where a loved one was buried. By the middle of the 19th century, uh, friends finally decided that under certain circumstances, marking graves could be appropriate. And so friends moved toward a new testimony on tombstones. Uh, tombstones would be allowed, but they had to be simple. The name of the deceased, the date of death and the age, or maybe the date of birth, no ornamentation, no epitaphs, no decoration of any kind, and usually strict limits on height and width. If you go, for example, to London Grove Meeting, Chester County, Pennsylvania, a meeting that goes back to the beginning of the 18th century and look at the burying ground, there's maybe one marker before 1850. But when you go to other meetings, such as, say, Gwynedd or Chichester or Old Colne, you'll find the burying ground full of simple rough stones going back into the 18th century. I'm Glenn Ratiff. I live in Sunbury, Pennsylvania. I attend at Pensdale Monthly Meeting. Thanks for watching this Quaker Speak video. Hit the button to subscribe. Okay.